Our text this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, <clears throat> chapter 4. And uh, we're looking at verses <clears throat> nine, 1 through 9 and 13 through 20. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and he sat in it out on the lake. And while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching, he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. And some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. <clears throat> and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear fruit. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. And then Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 13. <clears throat> then Jesus said to his disciples, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown there. Others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and at once they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. And still others, like seeds sown among the thorns, they hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and they choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, 30 or 60 or even 100 times what was sown. Let us pray. <clears throat> a gracious Father, we pray that as we reflect on this uh, particular story, this particular parable that our Lord told, that we might see how it fits into our life and that we might be blessed through your spirit. So we commit this time to you, Father. Give you much thanks in Christ's name, amen. The uh, title of our sermon this morning, you'll notice, is called Diagnosing the Heart. And, uh, one of the things that I've learned is that uh, they've got a lot of tools nowadays to diagnose your heart, to see whether it's functioning in a healthy way or not. <clears throat> and one of the first tools that they use, which is nearly 200 years old, is the stethoscope. And they're trying to see whether it's beating normally, you know, like thump, 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 you know. And uh, if they hear a, a regular beat or if they hear skip beats, and this was the case with my heart, it'd go thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and I, I had this stethoscope at home and I was listening to my heart, and uh, when it went thump, thump, I took it away. <laughs> and I decided that I wasn't going to listen to my heart anymore. One of the things that uh, kind of tipped me off that there was a problem was when I went to a doctor for a, 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 a just a regular checkup a while back. <clears throat> he listened to my heart and then he kept on listening to it. And then he called in some aides, some nurses, and wanted them to listen to it. And I thought, what's going on here? <laughs> you know? And of course, uh, he wanted them to hear what an unhealthy heart sounded like, you know. And, uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the first things, of course, that uh, doctors use to determine whether your heart is healthy or not. Um, the other thing, which you, a lot of you heard of, is an EKG, electrocardiogram. And that's when they take these electrodes and they kind of stick them on you, on your arms and your legs. And uh, what this, these electrodes, there's 10 of them, what they do is they, 
they record the electro, electrical signals of your heart and helps the doctor again to detect if there's any irregularities in terms of your heart's rhythm. Um, another uh, test that they use, one that they used with me, is called an echocardiogram. That's different than an electrocardiogram. This is an echocardiogram. And this is kind of a non-invasive exam, and uh, it takes an ultrasound of your chest. They take this paddle and spread your chest with uh, some kind of a slippery fluid, and they go around and around. And then they have a, a TV screen, and you can actually watch it. <laughs> you see your heart as it, as it beats, and, and as the valves uh, aren't working properly, you see that. And, uh, uh, when I went to uh, Brigham Women's Hospital, I had to send uh, this, uh, this test by way of a DVD uh, ahead. And uh, when I first met with the uh, doctor, he had it on the screen. And he looked at it, and he kept on looking at it, and he kept on looking at it. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> you know. and, uh, and that's when he said to me, because I went to him for a second opinion, and that's when he said to me, he says, if you were my patient, I'd put you in the hospital right now. And uh, so that's when I went back home and went right to Worcester uh, St. Vincent's and uh, met with my cardiologist without an appointment. <laughs> I said, look, we've got to take care of this, you know. And so he made an appointment with the surgeon at uh, St. V's. The surgeon looked at the uh, test, said, look, uh, your heart won't withstand this operation. He says, uh, we, we just can't do that here. You know, open heart surgery. And uh, so then I said, well, what do I do? He said, well, they have what they call a, a mitra valve clip. He said, but we don't do that. Uh, you, you know, you have to go to Brigham Women's to do that. So I went back to Brigham Women's and I met with a surgeon and thinking I was gonna talk about the, about the mitra valve clip. And uh, of course, he looked at my tests and stuff, and he said, well, he says, I think we can do the open heart surgery. And uh, I said, look, whatever you think, because he really gave confidence. He's a Japanese guy, good looking. That's my wife. My wife fell in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't stop talking about him after she met him, you know. And at uh, any rate, he did give tremendous confidence. And I said, look, whatever you want to do, you just, you just do it, you know. I said, uh, just take care of it. Uh, another test that they were going to do, but they decided they didn't have to, is when they um, take this tube and they put it up through your groin and through an artery into your heart. And they have a little camera there and they, they look at your heart and they can tell what's working, what's not working. Uh, and that's called a cardiac catheterization test. Now those are just a few of the uh, tests that uh, they use today. Uh, to find out whether you have a healthy heart or not. Now this morning I want you to diagnose your own heart. Now I'm not talking about that heart that pumps blood through your veins. I'm talking about that heart that the Bible talks about. In the Old Testament book of Proverbs, we read these words. It says, above all else, above all else, Guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The question is, is how well have you been guarding your heart lately? This is what we're interested in as we look at this parable of the sower. Is how well have you been guarding your heart? How healthy is that heart? Have you ever wondered what happens to all the preaching and all the teaching that uh, goes out from this pulpit Sunday after Sunday? Where does it go? What happens to it? Well, in this uh, parable of the sower, we are told what happens to it. In this parable, each of us will find our hearts being examined, talked about. Not a one of us will be missed, not a one of us. And perhaps it's for this reason that Jesus tells us that this parable is basic to all the others. 
as he puts it to his disciples in Mark's gospel, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any of the others? And so this uh, particular parable of the sower is found in three of the gospels, which indicates how important it is to us. In order to understand this parable, it helps to note that there are three basic images that Jesus uses here. The first is the image of seeds, which he tells us is the word of God. The second image is the uh, picture of the sower, the farmer, or that one who dispenses the seed. And the third image, of course, is the soil, in which the seed is sown. And Jesus tells us that that is talking about our heart. Now, with regards to the seed, the question that uh, immediately comes to mind is, why does Jesus compare God's word to seeds? The answer is because compared to other writings, God's word has life in it. As the author of Hebrews puts it, the word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Something smells good that's coming from the kitchen, by the way. <laughs> you see, in comparison to other things that have been written by men, God's word is different. It's alive, it's active, and it's powerful. In other words, like any other book, God's word imparts life. Like as a seed, it may seem small at first, but inside of that seed, there is a power that can, can transform a human heart. Have you ever seen a tree growing out of a huge boulder? How many of you have seen that? Yeah, most of us have. And in that huge boulder, has been split in two by a small seed that got lodged into a small crack in that rock. Well, this is the power that God's word has when it gets lo lo lodged into a small crack in the human heart. Now, for a seed, of course, to do any good, it has to be sown. That is, it must be planted. And this, of course, is where the sower comes in. This is where the preacher, the teacher comes in. Originally, the sower who sowed God's word was Jesus himself. For three years, he sowed the seed into the hearts of 12 men, who, with the exception of Judas, sowed it into the hearts of others. And these others then sowed it into the hearts of still others. Until today, because of their faithfulness, you and I have God's word sown into our hearts by faithful preachers and teachers of God's word. However, to anyone who sows God's word, there is a warning in our Bibles that tells us that we are not to sow two kinds of seed in the same field. That's found in the Old Testament book of Leviticus. That is, we are not to mix God's words with our own words. We are not to mix God's words with our theories or with our philosophies, or with our beliefs. We're to sow the pure word of God. And along these lines, the Apostle Paul reminds us about who causes the seed to grow. First Corinthians 3, verse 6, he says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God makes it grow. And then he adds, he says, the one who sows and the one who waters isn't anything, but only God who makes things grow. I like the way Jesus puts it in another parable called the parable of the growing seed. He says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. And of course, the how is God's spirit working in a heart. Now, this parable that we're looking at this morning is called the parable of the sower. 
but in reality it should be called the parable of the soil for the emphasis is on four types of soil hard soil shallow soil worldly soul or worldly, worldly heart and then a good heart in this congregation in fact in any any congregation there are always these four different kinds of soil these four different kinds of hearts that are present and you each one of you you have one of these the question is which one the first heart that Jesus talks about is a hard heart or as the Old Testament book of Ezekiel puts it a heart of stone in verse 4 and 5 of our text Jesus says to us he says listen a farmer went out to sow his seed and as he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and what Jesus is talking about is that soil that has been packed down and hardened by the traffic that has walked over it day after day and he's talking about that seed that falls on that path as representing seed that falls onto the heart of people who have hard hearts or hearts of stone that is those who have what we call unteachable spirits their attitude is that they have nothing to learn about faith either they know it all or they don't care Oftentimes we say with regards to these people that you might as well be talking to a brick wall as to them This was certainly the case with the Pharisees with regards to the teachings of Jesus Their hearts were close to the truth and Jesus so Jesus says with regards to these seeds that is thrown on, sown on these hard-hearted individuals He says the birds came and they ate these seeds up in explaining this part of the parable to his disciple he says in the 15th verse of our text he says some people are like seeds sown along the path where the word is sown as soon as they hear Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown to them sometimes on Monday I'll ask someone I see that I knew was in church what the sermon was about <laughs> and when they have a blank look on their face face I kind of wonder uh, you know, if this verse doesn't have some relevancy for them, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I, I've, I've found myself sometimes, I have to sometimes think when someone asks me, well, what was the sermon about that I preached? <laughs> and, uh, and I say, I can't remember. <laughs> well, it comes back to me. Now, as we said earlier, it is God who causes the growth. And he, we must remember, always remember, that he is the God of the impossible sometimes a lonely seed does manage to get lodged into a crack in this hard soil and take root in fact it was this verse that got logged, lodged into the heart of John Bunyan who lived during the 1600s John Bunyan was known in England as the most godless man in his village the blasphemous tinker of Bedfordshire, as he was called. He was regarded as so hard-hearted that no one in his village would dare talk to him about spiritual things. And yet when he heard this story about the sower and the seed that fell on hard soil, which the devil quickly snatched away, he said to himself, even the devil knows that if a man believes God's word, he will, be, he will be saved from the fires of hell. And so John Bunyan at that time opened up his heart to Christ. And when he did, God did some major heart surgery with John Bunyan. He actually gave him a new heart. As God says to the hard-hearted in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and I will put my spirit in you and I will move you to follow my ways. Well, this certainly was the case with John Bunyan. He became a tremendous, tremendous testimony to Christ in his age. And as you probably well know, he was the one who wrote that uh, 
Christian classic entitled Pilgrim's Progress. If you've never read it, you should read it. In verse 9 of our text this morning, after giving to his disciples the parable of the sower, Jesus makes a profound statement. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. A friend of mine recently had their ears cleaned out because they were having a hard time hearing. The doctor, I'm not sure what he used, they call it a, a, a alligator, but it's something they put in your ear to help clean, clean it out. And, uh, and he had all these, uh, this wax and these particles on a, uh, on a piece of uh, cloth that he had taken out of this person's ear. And, and looking at what had been removed, this friend of mine said to the doctor, it's amazing that I could hear anything at all with all that stuff in the way. And the doctor's response was classic. The ear, he said, collects a little bit at a time until the miracle of hearing is finally lost. Now, spiritual hearing is lost much in the same way. A little bit at a time is blocked up until finally the miracle of hearing God speak to us is lost to altogether. And so the penetrating question that I want to leave with you this morning is if God is, is trying to speak to you, are you listening? Having ears with which to hear, are you hearing? On the first Sunday in October, we will preach the second part of this parable. Let us pray. Gracious Father, thank you for your holy word and especially the words of your son that seem to be so down to earth and so easy to grasp if we were only listening. And so we just pray, Father, that this morning that uh, our ears are open and that we are open to the things that you have to say to us. And so bless us as we open up your holy word and let it reach into our hearts and bring healing where that healing needs to be. And so we just commit ourselves to you, Father, and thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.